Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your ticker guy coming at you from wonderful Niceville, Florida. Well, I want to present two charts for you today, folks. The first one is the charge-off and delinquency rate. This is accurate up through the end of the second quarter of this year. You'll see that it's really, really ugly. The important takeaway from this, folks, is that no banking system will survive long with a charge-off rate much beyond 1%. They can get away with it for a little while with very strong economic growth. This is why in the 1990s we managed to hold up reasonably well with charge-off rates that were getting up towards the 2% range. But we've never had a charge-off rate up around 3% before and delinquencies up around 10 And by the way, this is all commercial banks and all loan types, even the ones that are performing nominally well. Of course, they're getting dragged into the mud by the ones that aren't. That's a problem and we need to address it. The only way out without forcing all of this bad debt out into the open and making it default would be to have extremely strong economic growth. That economic growth, however, is impossible to achieve and here is the reason why. I'm going to bring this chart on up. This is an extension of the one that I presented in my rebuttal to Dennis Neal a couple of days ago. I added two columns to it. One of them being mortgage debt outstanding. That one was a little bit tricky. I had to dig into the census data to find it. The, uh, the Federal Reserve Board's data doesn't quite jive with it. I'm not quite sure why. I suspect that the reason has to do with either the inclusion or exclusion of second lines and some other information. And the other one was asset bases. Now, the asset base information has a little star next to it because nonprofits are included in there. Unfortunately, the Fed doesn't break it out. So there's, there's a little bit of a distortion in there, but I, I've looked at some of the data sources and it looks like we can safely ignore that. It doesn't make a material difference. Here is the bottom line, folks. The asset base shouldn't matter because you don't pay debt out of assets, you pay it out of income. But I found something interesting when I put it in, that's the reason I decided to leave it. And that is, in the late 1990s, even though the stock market was on a tear, the total asset base of citizens and nonprofit corporations was in fact falling. That is probably, compared to the consumer debt level, what goaded Greenspan and his masters, along with the goons in Washington, D.C., into their free money policies. The intent was, was that we could get out of what was to be a rather nasty contraction in outstanding credit. About 15% or so that was necessary on both housing and consumer credit in order to bring them back into balance. But notice what happened. Asset levels spiked eventually as the free money and fraudulent asset game took hold, but it didn't last very long. We're now back to about 2004 levels in terms of assets, and that's a problem because the debt is still there. That overhang, folks, is over $400 billion a year by my calculations, and it's going to dent GDP until that comes out. The problem with this, of course, is we can't have a dented GDP when we've got charge-off rates up around 3%. Folks, we won't get away with this another time. 2000-2001 was bad. 2007 to 2009 was much worse in terms of the impact on unemployment and the economy in general. If we try to do this again, to pull forward yet more demand, to put more fraudulent credit into the system, to try to pump yet another asset bubble somewhere, the outcome will be catastrophic. We must prevent this. I don't know if it takes the Japanese or the Chinese telling us to stuff it and refusing to buy our bonds to wake our government up. I don't know if it takes a million people spontaneously showing up in Washington, D.C. and closing that town down. I don't know what it takes. And by the way, I'm not advocating for violence. I'm advocating for peaceful demonstrations, the kind of civil disobedience that this country used to be known for and now is best found in places like France. But I do know this. The mathematics are never wrong. And if we don't stop this insanity and continue down this path, we won't get more than another three or four years out of this. And we may only get weeks or months. We need to take 20 to 30 percent out of both the mortgage credit system in terms of debt outstanding and consumer credit in order to bring us back into balance with 2004 asset and income levels. That will bankrupt a huge number of banks and other institutions, but it has to be done. We can attempt to avoid it, but we will fail. We can either have a bad economy now or a potential collapse of our society later. Those are our choices, ladies and gentlemen. You can call me Cassandra if you want. You can call me Eeyore if you want. 
But the math is never, ever wrong. Have a good day.